This is the third video in this series of how I made this um, kitchen storage unit for this camper van. Uh, the other two should be just up there if you want to see the full series. Um, but in this one, what we're looking at is making the worktops, um, making the tap and fitting that, making the bowl and putting the hob in and then putting the utilities in there, the gas bottle, water tanks, and then finally the fridge. So I'm going to make the worktop out of this material here. And this is 140 wide, 138 deep. So it's going to be quite a chunky worktop. Um, and what we're going to do is biscuit joint a number of these together. Then we'll do the scribing on the back and fit it into the van. But before we do any of that, we want to cut this to size. And as I say, its length is 1385. So we've got four of these for the um, fridge unit, which is five or oh, five one zero, which is there. Um, so that will need a little bit of trimming. That's okay. And we have three of them for the main worktop. Now, when the three of them are put together, that gives her exactly four two zero, which was her original mark. Now. I just want to see if this will scribe and if there'll still be enough of it left overhang uh, on the unit once this has been scribed to the back wall. Now to attempt to scribe this, I have this handy um, scribing tool uh, from eBay. I think that's £6 or something like that. And we're going to try that. And the first thing that we want really is to make sure that we've got this pretty much sitting square on this cabinet, which we have about the same all the way up <clears throat> and we want the scribing tool we want it pulled forward enough so that when we put that on it's it's right on this back edge this is the furthest point out uh, all of the rest of this is going to come in a little bit so furthest point out and then what we want to do is just try to run that along there now it's slightly different because the actual line of this is lower than how it appears if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to take that easy. You see we can't push that against the wall because the wall is lower. But we've got something to go on there. So the approach with this is I'm going to um, jigsaw these lines in here and I think the rest of this we should be able to get off on the bandsaw. All right so we've got this uh, scribed in um, looking good and we're three boards just give with this overhang at the front which I like I quite like that um, so we're going to leave them like that we're going to now glue these together uh, biscuit joint them and glue them together. All right so I've set all of these boards up um, and we're going to just draw a line Paint pencil lines will come back off when we sand them up. But this is where I'm going to put the uh, the biscuits in this. I want a few of them in just to make sure that it's nice and strong. So that's it there. We'll put four lines of them in. Alrighty, so we have all of that pretty much ready to go. Now we're going to, again, as I say, put a nice thick line of glue down there. So, and put plenty of it over these biscuits on the other section of this. That's it. And then we want to put that on top of there. And if everything is well with the world, which it should be, then that should be looking good. Okay, so with them glued up and locked in place, we're going to put these sash clamps over them. Good. Now, as I say, clamp to the bench also. Each corner, and that will just hopefully 
make sure that everything stays nice and flat. Okay, these just need to go off and dry a little, the glue. And then we'll get on to the next stage of this, which will be drilling out for the sink, uh, cutting out for the hob and the tap. I've taken this really sharp rasp. And I'm just going to take the edges off this uh, by quite a bit. And I've got a piece of 60 grit paper on here. And we're just going to sand that down, take any pencil lines off, give it a couple of coats of lacquer. And we're going to do this the same with the uh, longer worktop as well. Now this is the bowl which I'm using as the sink in this van and it's quite a different setup to ones which I've done in the past. I've normally just done those aluminium drop-in sinks but this one will stand on top of the worktop um, and it's going to have this type of uh, tap. Now to make that work you can't just run this to the uh, wheel pump uh, because there's no switch on here. So you need one of these as well. This is a pressure switch and again I've not done one of these before but what I believe is that the um, will run a line from here to one end of the switch and then from the other end of the switch to the wheel pump and there's an electrical connection on that and I believe the idea is that um, when you turn this off and as the pressure builds up in the pipe it'll switch the switch off and as you turn it on and the pressure drops the switch will switch the pump on this is what they tell me uh, we're going to find that out um, but first of all i have this um, waste connection to fit into this bowl so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill a little pilot hole in here and then i'm going to take it out with this uh, hole cutter now i'm sure that there's a method of finding the exact center of a circle um, with, I don't know, a bit of trigonometry or something like that. But I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm going to see that that is close enough to the centre. So we just want the pilot hole to start this off. And this can jump around all over the place uh, if you don't put a little pilot hole in first. So, pilot hole in. And again, this will tend to jump around a bit, so you've got to really keep a hold of it and uh, keep it nice and tight. Okay, so far so good. Um, let's get rid of these burrs in the bin. Okay, that's looking all right. I'm just going to clean that up with a little file. Now I bought this waste for it, and we're going to see what this looks like. That's going to fit in there like that. Obviously it secures up at the bottom. I will put just a line of silicon around here as well, just to make sure. And then we're going to look at how do we get this fitted to the worktop. And so there's just the placement of all of this material. Um, <clears throat> now we have this, which is, it's one of those things that you would put an outdoor tap on with. You know, if you were leading an outdoor tap from your uh, kitchen or utility room into an outside space this is the type of thing you would use I forget uh, is it called a hose bar or something like that I forget the exact name of it but this is the thing anyhow so we're just going to see how this all looks first and then we'll fit it all together and I'll, I've got a spot on there which was more or less the middle I'm going to take it a little bit forwards just to there and I'm going to say this looks to me like a good placement for that. So I just want to take this out. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do with this is just get everything in place and then see if we can make the tap. The bowl is going to sit there. I've tested all of this and it is watertight, it's all good. Uh, we're using this, so we'll slip that on there. That's good access there. We're going to put a bit of pipe out of the top and we're going to put an elbow on here, a piece of pipe this way and a little piece coming down. So we just want to measure all of that and cut these pieces of pipe to size. Now to solder up these joints, I've got to say this is something I've never actually done before, but uh, thankfully I've watched some uh, videos 
of other people doing this and they assure me that this is the way to do it. Right, I've cleaned the pipe up. I've cleaned the ends of the pipe up with some of this uh, wire wool and I'm just putting some of this flux on it. Sorry, I think we want a bit of flux in there also. So just a bit, again, the watchword I think is not too much. So that's going to fit in there. And we want the same with this, but we do want something to hold that in place whilst we're doing it. So I'm going to put just a couple of pieces of wood here on the bench to hold that in place. So I've got the torch going, and I believe the idea is you just start applying the heat underneath this joint. The flux will bubble off, it seems to be doing. And there's my shoulder. Check the other side. That looks good. We can just see a little ring of solder which has come out all the way around that. So I'm going to leave that very hot. I'm going to leave it to cool down, then I'll do the other side. So just to finish off with this uh, tap assembly, um, our next thing is to secure this in place. So we've got the washer and the olive. Got a little bit of jointing compound, just a touch around where the olive is going to sit. Put a little bit more around this thread on here again not a lot that's all looking good now we we'll obviously want to make sure that it taps the right way it has a directional arrow there so we're going to sit that on there now we can just fully tighten that so the next thing is the same on that a little bit of the joint and compound we'll get that on make sure it's positioned properly and then tighten this top nut up and again before i fully tighten that just want to make sure it's sitting in the right place as far as the ball goes. I think about there. That's okay. That'll get a good run off into the ball. And it's not in the way when using the ball. I'll show you this assembly here. The thing, this is going to go into that pipe underneath the uh, tap on one side. And then it'll come through like this. And hopefully we can get that onto the pump without it kinking too much. It will narrow a bit, I think, but uh, we don't want to get a kink in it. Right, so that's all in place and sitting nicely. Uh, again, we've got the feed from the pump on this side. Uh, again, Jubilee clipped in. Next thing we want to do with this is the electrics. We want to wire that all up. And in this booklet that comes with the switch, it says that this top terminal here is from the battery, which would be this live. And this bottom terminal goes to the live of the pump, which will be there. And then obviously the neutral from the pump will connect up to that neutral and that'll just put a switched circuit in there. And obviously this wire then leads up to the control panel and it's fused um, at the control panel. So what we want to do is just take a little bit of wire off the end of there and off the end of there. And we have these spade bits which will fit onto those terminals. All right, I'll just put a little um, cable tie on there. This is all looking good. It's time to test it, just to make sure. But first of all, I want to plumb the waste of the sink in. Just to show you what I've done with this sink. Um, this is fixed on there with Sikaflex uh, 522, which should be fine. They tell me the Sikaflex 522 will uh, indeed keep a solar panel on the roof. So I'm pretty sure it'll keep a sink on a bench as well. Now underneath there, we've got this waste pipe which is coming from there through the cabinet here and into the waste tank and that leaves just enough room for the fridge. Okay, now we have this unit set up here. I've uh, clipped this on with Jubilee clips. Now there's two of them, uh, belt and braces. Let's just make absolutely sure. I did try this with just one in the middle and I did get a little drip leak out of there. I think this pipe that goes in has got a rib in the center of it and the Jubilee clip didn't like that very much. So what I've done is I've put one towards the flat piece of the pipe at the front and I've put another one towards the flat piece of the pipe at the back. Now this is all wired up 
I've switched it on at the control panel over there and then when we turn this tap it kicks in and the water flows and when we turn the tap the other way switch it off the pressure builds up it flicks the switch and it stops the pump so that seems to be working okay now the next thing that we've got to do here is put the hob in uh, the gas bottle and the gas connections i've got all the stuff here uh, with the bottle itself obviously i'll put a strap on here to keep that steady but i've cut this piece of wood i've just cut the uh, circumference or the radius of the bottle there uh, so that will sit there very nicely very snug now under here we have the inlet for the hob and we'll have a couple of things we'll have one of these which is a quick release um fitting there it is and i'm going to put that over here somewhere so that we can get the bottle out easy otherwise it means you have to take the regulator off the bottle to get it out but if you have this that'll just come apart and the whole bottle comes out much better so I'll, i'm going to fit this to the to the hob and then we'll take it along here we'll clip it to the wall down to here cut it at the right length and make the joining piece for the for the regulator so just to show you what's happened here, um, we have, it's very dark in here I know, but we do have the pipe, gas pipe coming from the hob down to here, uh, quick release valve there, just see it, and then that goes on down to the bottle. Okay, so after having tested, tested and tested again, I'm pretty sure that the only place that the water is coming out of here is the tap. And thus, at this point, we can fit the fridge. So this is the last job in here, really. We're gonna fit the fridge in, secure the worktop down and then that's it um, and that is it for this whole series actually so I hope you've enjoyed the uh, watching me build this uh, cabinet thing here I think it's turned out very nicely uh, I do like it myself so thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed the series uh, do consider subscribing to the channel and if you would like to see the earlier parts of this they are indeed available here so thank you very much <laughs>